So we have figured out that we can uh, open this hearing and, and proceed with the hearing. We will not be able to uh, deliberate as a board and make a decision tonight um, because we do not have a full quorum, uh, but we can revisit that. So we are going to um, go ahead and um, conduct the hearing um, and then the policy that we're working under anyway gives us 45 days to um, come up with a decision and get it back to the complainants. Uh, so I am calling this meeting to order at 639. Uh, the purpose of this, this hearing is to hear the complaint from the NAACP of Rutland and the Gadakina and Gadakina uh, regarding the Randolph Union Middle and High School mascot image and name. This complaint is being brought in accordance with the Orange Southwest School District Non-Instructional Operations Policy F2, school mascot and branding. This is a policy required by the state of Vermont. The policy can be found on the OSUD website under policies and procedures. The policy pro or the process for this hearing will be as follows. The spokespersons for the NAACP of Rutland and Gadakina will be asked to explain their complaint to the board. The board will then have the opportunity to ask questions regarding the complaint. Once the board has received the information that it needs, there will be an opportunity for the board to hear public comment. The process for public comment will be the same as it is when the board has its regular meetings. I will review that process before we begin public comment. At 7.30, the board will either make a motion to extend the time for public comment or to enter executive session to deliberate. The board will provide a written response to the complainants within 45 days of this hearing as required by policy. Are there any questions regarding the process for this hearing? Board members? General public? I, I just said, just a little one. You said you can't vote on anything, so why would you retire and discuss it? Because at least we can get that part done and then we can come back to it so that we can move forward. You can't move forward until you have a quorum to vote on that. Right. And if but, they don't hear what the discussion is, what do they have to base their... The board members can hear, but they can't, they can't vote. <laughs> So you, you are correct. It sounds like um, we won't be going into executive session. We'll have to hold off on the executive session once everyone is sworn in and um, we have that opportunity. So we'll have to do that at another time. So will there be public input at that time? Uh, not during the executive session. The executive no. session is just, so there will be public after comment session. after we hear so we've arranged this hearing um, quite a while in advance so that we can hear from the complainants. Um, so this is their opportunity to um, uh, give us uh, a presentation of their complaint. Um, and public comment will be after that. Correct. At that point, before you get back to them, will the public be able to have input 
on this again? Um, no, I would say not. So the board members that aren't here can can will will be using ORCA, and we will be informing them as well what we heard. Um, We, we, we have a quorum here, it's just the two are not sworn in. So they will be here for all the public comment and will be here for um, the presentations. You probably need a mic. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. And again, just to, to try to help a little bit. So again, it's an unusual circumst circumstance and I think people are trying to move forward. Um, given that unusual circumstance within the bounds of what we're able to do. Um, please recognize that um, two of the board members who are not currently sworn in because the vote was just yesterday are here with us tonight, are here for the discussion. They can actually ask questions or make comment from the floor like anyone else. Um, so they will be able to partake in everything that happens here tonight. Um, they just couldn't couldn't vote or, or, or comment as a board member yet, but they will have the full exposure that all the other board members will have from tonight's meeting. How many members do you need for a quorum? Five. And we have four. We have six four four four. Uh, Myself, Chelsea Sprague, who is online, uh, Rachel Gatiss, and Katya Evans. And we have our two board members who've been voted in, uh, Hannah Arias and Sam Hooper, uh, but uh, they haven't been sworn in yet. So all set and done, when the final comes through, it's gonna be voted on by closed doors? Uh, the, well, the, I, I'll, I'll explain yeah. sort of how that works. So, so basically we're gonna hear the complaint and then um, we're gonna hear from the public and then at a later date when everyone is sworn in, we'll have an executive session and, and come up with a response. to respond to a complaint? No, no, this is to respond to this particular complaint. We have to follow the, the policy and the policy says that the board needs to hear the complaint and then, um, and then respond within 45 days. And who swears them in? Is it a justice of the peace? Town clerk. Uh, town clerk. Town, the town clerk as That's far as we know. Clerk. Yeah, as far as we know, yes. Okay. So we are going to move forward. So, um, uh, so where was I in all of this? Had I gone through? Uh, I went through everything. You were here. That's okay. You so, right, right, we were checking in on questions. So uh, I would like to ask the spokesperson for the NAACP of Rutland to present their complaint to the board. Are they, they were gonna show up online? Are they here? Um, is there someone in the audience who, uh, who is here to speak on behalf of the NAACP of Rutland? Is there anybody here? Okay. Uh, is the spokesperson from Gatakina here or online? Uh, 
you're online, please put your hand up in the chat chat box. <laughs> Okay. Is there someone in the in the audience that's come in person? So there's no one here to present. So there is no one here to to present the complaint to the OSD board regarding the mascot name and image. Seeing that the complainants are not here to present, I would I would like to ask the board for a motion to adjourn this hearing. The purpose of this meeting was to hear the complaint. Don't you have a written complaint? Can we read the written complaint? Yeah. I think it might be easier with like comments. Okay. Yeah. The, the policy, however, is that they need to be here before the board. They need to well, appear before the board. Before. So, it. I yes? have a question. If the, when you go to court on something, if the complainant does not show up, the whole thing should be dismissed. It should be a non issue. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm guessing. However, seeing that, you have a number of people who obviously feel very strongly, and unfortunately, considering who the complaint was filed by, it may not go quietly into the night. And I think considering everyone took time out of their schedule, the school board should at least allow everybody who came here to speak on the subject to have their say. What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> because if they, come up, if they contact these people without anybody knowing it, at least everyone here it's to say what they came some time out of their day to say, and the board moving forward will understand what the majority of people feel and want said about the fact. So if it does come up again, we have a starting point. Instead of starting all over, we've already established that the majority feels this way and this is the way the public feels and the alumni feel. And everybody came here and they obviously feel passionately about it and they should speak to the board so the board understands where people are coming from. So moving forward on issues like yeah, this, the, the commonality. I'm so looking at the policy. To to appear before. Yeah. If they I, are not I understand you, they can't even have so, yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to interrupt. Um, I'm reading right from the policy that we need to follow and it says uh, in terms of complaints an individual may request an opportunity to appear before the board for the purposes of presenting the complaint relevant facts and further explanations. The board shall hear the complaint in a fair and just manner. We've set ourselves up here to do that. The folks who have brought the complaint have not arrived. We have not heard from them. Uh, Do you have any way to the, contact them? Uh, so I have a question. Do you have a written complaint from them? Yes, they sent a letter and, and it was sent back to you. complaint to you. And we should be able to respond. Did we hear it? But that's not what the policy says. That isn't the procedure for hearing the complaint. They, they send a letter and then we provide a hearing for them to show up. And, so they, did not show up. and they did not show up. Did you let so, them know it was tonight? Yes, they've known for several weeks. And that's their choice for not showing up. The board actually, they requested accommodations to be here tonight, one of which was the meeting was going to be um, in person. Um, they requested to be able to do this through remote session, which we allowed that accommodation for. So yes, they were well informed and we were making changes to try to be accommodating to them as a district. I think we, I think well, we, 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 right? we, we met all their requirements. Yes, according to our, we are following policy, which is what we have to do as you the governing body. Complaint. You can't Pardon? at least read it. Um, and let us know what the complaint is. To begin with. 
short the complaint. Uh, well, it's the complaint is is irrelevant now because they didn't show up. So have you tried contacting them? Uh, we could send them an email. They, we email back. Someone has a question. A question back here, right here. So I came all the way from North Carolina for this. They didn't come down the street. I'm just. Uh, what? So are you guys gonna do all this all over again, or is it done? That's, I think that's why everyone's confused. About. I have five. I feel like they don't know if it's a confusing situation. It's a confusing situation for us as well. So we are trying to follow the, the policy. The policy is that the complainants come before the board and, and explain their complaint. They're not in the audience. They're not online. So I therefore, you should give the people that are here to express their feelings. It's not well, our they shouldn't, you dummies. Well, hold, hold on. So what I'd like to do is adjourn this hearing. We aren't having a hearing anymore. The complainants are not here. Why not have a meeting? Yeah. So the board in. Can we adjourn? Yeah. And open Okay. So what we could do is we could um, we will adjourn the hearing because the hearing is not taking place. The complainants are not here, and we can have uh, an open forum where people can express their feelings. We uh, sure, we could read the complaint. Um, well, it took a long way to get there. <laughs> what happens if you have an open forum? Is that recorded? Is that anything? Or where does no, it would not be a meeting because we, the purpose of our meeting as a board tonight was to do a hearing. So they're not here. So we, we are adjourning that purpose of the of meeting together it sounds like folks would like to share express they've all arrived to express their opinions about the mascot and the name we can transition over to an open forum where folks can just talk it won't be a board meeting it will just be a community meeting where people can share their views about the mascot and the name well, Does that complain. seem? Yes. 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 We have a policy that no, no, no. has to be followed. That's why we're here. Yeah, it does. This is why we're here is to end this. Put an end to it. This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. They do that every year. So I don't even, I don't are, you, are you prepared to dismiss the complaint right now? Yeah. Well, we, I need to have the board actually uh, vote, it, yeah. vote yeah. to end this hearing. Yeah. So we don't. Do you have enough board members to do that? Uh, uh, we can adjourn without we a vote. Can we, can we cannot <laughs> vote to dismiss the complaint without a quorum. So we yeah. have to wait until we have a quorum to dismiss the complaint. Right. right. We well, will. I mean, are you prepared to do that because they didn't show up? Yes. Or, Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. I can I can read it. I have it in front of you. Yeah. Okay. So I second. can I have a motion to adjourn, to adjourn the hearing? I move to adjourn the hearing. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. We don't have to vote. Oh, we have less than vote. We're, we don't have to vote. Okay. We're good. So we have adjourned the hearing and we are no longer uh, worrying about having a quorum or uh, this is not an official board meeting, but it sounds like there are a lot of folks here who would like to um, come up to the mic perhaps and express their um, views on 
or their uh, feelings about the mascot. Um, but before we do that, um, perhaps uh, Mr. Millington can let folks know sort of where we are in the mascot situation. About reading the complaint. Oh, and he could read the complaint. Uh, I'm happy to. Um, Here, you're going to uh, need the microphone. The mic. um, let me see if we disconnect it. Here, it, it'll take uh, yeah. probably three or four minutes to read through. Um, what I was not going to read as part of it, if that is all right, is um, they filed a collective complaint against eight schools um, around the state. I will read the part that they spoke of in terms of Randolph High School, if that makes sense. Um, you know, if folks want to hear the other ones, I'm happy to do that as well, but it'll, it'll extend the time that it takes. Um, all right. So, to the Vermont Agency of Education, um, Secretary Daniel M. French, the undersigned are writing on behalf of ourselves as people who are and who represent organizations in support of indigenous natives of Vermont, as well as national civil rights organization. Mascots are an issue that is often avoided by schools because of controversy and reaped in a fallacy of historic tradition. School boards listen to stories of it's our legacy, it's always been, it's our history, with little to no understanding that this legacy is painful and offensive uh, to too many. It's not a positive memory for anyone, everyone. According to the Oxford Dictionary, mascot means a person or thing supposed to bring good luck or used to symbolize a particular event or organization. According to Merriam-Webster, it means a person, animal, or object adopted by a group as a symbolic figure, especially to bring them good luck. With this in mind, it is denigrating to be used as a symbol of good luck, especially for peoples who have been long subjected to violence because of their racial and ethnic identity. We are at a point in time where we must remove this symbolism in order to remove the legacy of white supremacy which harms all students and people. There is another argument that using the names and symbols that are connected to natives is actually honoring them, but in fact, it is actually objectifying them. An example would be when an opposing team is getting ready to compete against one of the schools with these mascots, they often burn their mascot in effigy during bonfire pep rallies. The National Congress of American Indians and over 1,500 nat national native organizations and advocates have called for a ban on all native imagery, names, and other appropriations of native culture and sports. The joint letter includes over 100 native-led organizations as well as tribal leaders and members of over 150 federally recognized tribes reflecting their consensus that native mascots are harmful. Deb Harland, approved in March 2021 as the first Indigenous Secretary of the Interior, has long advocated for teams to change Native American mascots. Below is a comprehensive list of mascots that we have identified to be using, using mascots names and or imagery, which will be recognized as upholding harmful legacies that continue to harm our children. We are submitting this letter to formally file a complaint against the following schools as part of Act 152, an act relating to non-discriminatory non school branding. I'll read the names of the schools and then I'll read their specific um, complaint relative to uh, Randolph Union High School. So Missisquoi High School in Swanton is one, uh, Vermont Commons in South Burlington, Brattleboro Union High School in Brattleboro, Leland and Gray Union Middle and High School in Townsend, uh, Randolph Union High School in Randolph, uh, and U32 in Stowe, um, as well as Green Mountain in Chester. Um, in terms of Randolph Union High School, they write, the begalloping ghosts of Randolph recently tried to repaint the clear image of a KKK rider and make it into something more ghostly. Legacy is strong here, history is strong here, this change will not change history. The painful reminder of the KKK will forever be with us, a story of a long-standing African-American Vermont legislator recently told me he was going to a basketball game to play the kids from Randolph. Upon entering the gym and seeing the galloping KKK ghost, he was frightened, he froze, he could not play, he could not concentrate, and to this day he remembers those terrible feelings. Once again, there is a deep legacy attached to this image, newly painted or not, the image and name must go. 
me see. They conclude by saying, we live in a world where school shootings occur regularly. Black and brown people are regularly recorded on the news as being killed by in places of worship and grocery stores. How can we continue to promote violence in our schools by having a mascot called the Bullets, the Rangers, the Minutemen, the Marauders, the Patriots? We live in a state where we are encouraging new arrivals daily. Schools are the deciding factor in where they settle often. If your child has come from a war-torn country, would you want them attending a school with a mascot called the Bullets? Violence promoted symbolically surely encourages violence to happen in real life, and it has a deliritous effect on all people. During the insurrection that occurred on January 6th, people destroyed, killed, and maimed, people protecting our capital, and many of them called themselves the Patriots. Furthermore, there are organizations that exist in Vermont who are confirmed hate groups by national law enforcement officials who label themselves as the Patriot Front. They have been known to litter our state and in particular our universities with hateful propaganda. At the southern border, there are groups of vigilantes who harm and sometimes cause violence specifically to people seeking asylum. They call themselves Minutemen. These so-called patriots and Minutemen are the very people that took our land and life ways. Patriots and Minutemen in today's world signify fighting war and violence. We are urging you to consider each of the statements above as we are officially filing complaints with the full approval of our organizations. We are available to discuss any of these issues with you to go more in depth. We are certain Vermont can do better and lead the nation in becoming a safe and welcoming environment for all people whether we are white, brown, or black, and whether we are new immigrants or the original caretakers of this land, we all desire to have safe, happy, healthy communities and children free from imagery and names that perpetuate harm. Isn't this what you would want for your children and your grandchildren? Uh, sincerely, Judy Dow and Mia Schultz. So um, we'll, we'll run this like we would our public comment, even though, again, this is not an official, this is just a opportunity, open forum for folks to express their views. Um, so we'll have folks come up for three minutes. Can we well, just like us up here at the table, it's probably easier for everyone to hear you if you come up to the mic. Unless there's a we'll yeah. It's still being recorded by Orca Media, right? So I would imagine that people could be seen and heard better. From the microphone, yes. Yeah. Are you, are you able to able comment, to comment if, you if you are online? Like, will you be like, reading, you be reading online, comments? online comments? We're not reading comments, but if you, we can hear you and we can put this mic over near the owl and it will pick your voice up. Because okay. you just, you came across to... very uh, loudly. You're gonna need to Thank put you. hands up if you are online so that we can see that you would like to comment. So um, if folks, I'm sorry, it's really hard to see people. That's why I keep putting my hand up on my, um, if you want to just come up one at a time to the microphone and it would be helpful if you would just say your name, um, just so folks know who you are. Um, and so. Um, being online, it's hard to see if anyone is coming up. Would I be jumping the line if I? Uh, you, yes, you would be jumping the line. We'll we'll um, we'll we'll let folks who are online know because it's it is hard to see. Okay. Oh, there we go. No, yeah. Is it? Okay. Can people hear? Sweet louder. It's uh maybe this is. I'm 
may not reach, but we can move the podium over. attempted to turn on the house lights it has not been possible we need to do some massive renovations in this space so are you are you ready I'm, I'm, if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. All right, cool. Go ahead. All right, my name, uh, my name is Dylan Smith. Um, I grew up here. Um, live in Charlotte, North Carolina now. Um, I, I mean, I had a lot to say because I was really coming because I was curious to hear what the complaint was and, and everything. But obviously, that's a little different. But I, I do want to at least say this, that um, the, for me, when I was here, the mascot, our mascot was so unique. And it was unique to us, and it was unique for our school, and our town, and the kids, and the people in our town. And in the time frame in which I was here, we went through a lot, and we had a lot of loss from our school. A lot of a lot of kids were lost while we were here, and there was something about this mascot that just kind of brought it together for us. And we always were able to rally together because we were different, and be, and I think that was part of the mascot. It was just so unique to everybody else's. And you know, when we were at events, it was we believe in ghosts. Like it wasn't, it's not, and I understand why people feel the way they do, and times have changed, and, and I get that. But even right here, the Justin Morgan horse is right there. I think us being galloping ghosts means a lot to a lot of people, and I feel like a lot of people in this community have been here their whole lives. They've never left. This is what they, this has been a part of their life. And changing that, even for me, um, I don't know if I'd be connected to coming back. I've never missed a basketball season, I don't think, yet, Jeremy. I don't think I've missed a basketball season since I graduated in 2010. But if everything changed, then I'm not connected to here anymore. When I'm around and where I am, all over the country, People are like, where are you from? And proudly I say Vermont, and then I say Randolph. And they're like, wow, I've never met anyone from Vermont before. I'm like, I damn sure, damn sure you haven't met a black person from Vermont before. And then they laugh, and then I go, I literally changed the black population by leaving, so they keep calling me to come back. And they laugh some more, and it's a, but it's a sense of pride. I love being from here because of this community. And nobody here has ever made me feel like I didn't belong, or I shouldn't be here. And I got my jersey on right now. And I used to love playing on that court and on the field. And uh, it would be, it would be devastating, I think, honestly, for a lot of us, if, if it was changed completely. If you want to get rid of the ghost on riding the horse, I'm, I'm cool with that. Like, I, like, whatever, that's not what it's about. None of our stickers, none of our merch really has that on there. It's all our you. But just the horse and the ghost part, that's what we care about, the galloping part. It's cool, it's different. And um, I don't know, that, I, that was all my two cents. I wish I was speaking to the people that were curious actually about it, but um, I think that it's safe to say that if they're not willing to show up and put in the effort for you guys, I mean, that speaks all that I really need to hear from them. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to somebody online next. So, uh, Emma Jan Janicki. And I think if I hold I this. We can hear it fine. Can you hear it? Yep. Yes, I, are you able to hear me? You can hear it. Yep. Okay. Hi. Um, thanks for calling on me. Um, 
I was thinking about this earlier today. Um, I'm an educator in the district, new to Vermont. Um, I will say my high school mascot in New York was the generic Indians. And my high school has been, people have been working for years to try and change that mascot. And I am excited that this district has an opportunity to also think critically um, about history and about the future and about the kind of um, values around diversity and inclusion that the district stands for. Um, I kind of felt earlier summing it up as if you have to ask if your mascot could represent the KKK, then then maybe it's time to change um, the mascot so that that's not something people have to wonder or ask. And there is so much worthwhile and important flora and fauna in the area that would serve, I think, as a really powerful mascot as well that would not uh, you know, possibly be offensive or contain a history of violence towards marginalized and oppressed people. Um, I think the district has an opportunity to kind of step up and take a stand about uh, the history of oppression in the United States. Um, so I, I just hope that it takes the opportunity to really think about that. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's what I have. So thanks for listening. Hi, one second. Um, I just have something quick to say, and I want to say this is really directed specifically at the Randolph mascot and not others. So I think I agree with Dylan a lot. I recently graduated about five years ago, and there is a lot of pride in the like we believe in ghosts. I also found it very kind of mystical and something that I felt like a bunch of people could get behind because it's not like very sports centered in that type of way and it just created a lot of community and I think recently Randolph and the student body has been really working on bolstering their community and making this a place where everyone feels accepted and I think a big part about that is the uniqueness of our mascot and in the complaint in the end they said something really important they said we deal in, with schools like a lot of mass shootings and a lot of mental health crises. And so my question is, why aren't we focusing on that instead of focusing on this mascot that I don't feel like is Do we have anyone else out in the audience? I see someone coming down. Yeah. You can, do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. I'm on the stage. <laughs> Hi, I'm Don Wood. Um, this is real personal to me. Uh, my father was the original galloping ghost. Um, in 1939-40, those 16, 17-year-old boys say to him, went over to Rutland, unknown. They were the Randolph white shirts. They didn't even, they weren't even supposed to be there. They're playing division, well, A, because we were B, they were A. And we beat them with fast breaks, determination, in those pure white uniforms. That's where the name came from. Aldo Marusi. Asked Coach Gates if he could start calling us the Galloping Ghost. And he agreed. That night, when we went in there, there were white shirts, unknown. When they came out of there, they were the Galloping Ghost, and proud of it. Nothing is racist in their beginning. And we never have thought of it that way. And my suggestion to hopefully calm things down, get rid of the ghost on top of the horse. Let's have a horse that's galloping and proud. 
Because that's what we are. That's what we're supposed to be. And it seems to be falling off here in the last few years of a proud galloping ghost area. I don't know what's happening, but maybe you should start thinking more about being the galloping ghost again. Thank you. We have another person. Yes, come on down. Hi, my name is Karen McGinty, and I've lived in this town for 20 years as another black person, but I have a different view. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit older. I have not one, but two instances of in history of the Klan. And I'll tell you what it's like to see a Klansman on horseback, because I saw one. I'll tell you what it's like to feel like you are going to just die right there because that is the epitome of hate. When I see the galloping ghosts, I think of the Klansmen, and I know people here don't, and I don't expect anybody to stand in my shoes, but as a black person, it is devastating. I have cried about this, and I don't have children. I have supported every educational budget in this town. I come to school suppers. I try to do all that because I believe in public education. But if I had children, I would never allow them to wear that uniform because that's what it stands for to me. There's a history of my seeing them in the 80s. There's a history of them shooting up my grandfather's town because they were upset because he was a successful black person down south. My friends have bullet holes in their walls and slept with double-barreled guns because of the Klan. And so when I see that, that's what I think of. And it's hard for me to erase it. It's hard for me to say, oh, it's the history, it's the legacy. I hear that, it's the history. But times have changed. And we have people who don't want to teach black history anymore because it's upsetting to white kids. This is white history that's upsetting to black people, and it is. And I might be the only one standing in this room who agrees. No, I have someone here. I might be the only black person in this room that says that, but I have to say it, and I have to be here. I've never come to one of these meetings, but this upsets me so much, I can't even tell you. You need to get rid of this. There are a million animals out there. You could be the polar bears, you could be the flying squirrels, but this is a racist symbol. It is. A galloping horse, a person uh, on a galloping horse. You pull up a Ku Klux Klan picture of a person on a horse, like and they are, you can superimpose them. That's all I'm going to say. That's how I feel, and I just I feel. Know how our oh, excuse up. me, please, please let people finish speaking. You will have your turn. I'm going to sit here and listen to everybody who disagrees. So please don't shout at me. I feel this way. I'm not going to ever feel differently. So if you keep this mascot, that's your choice. But don't kid yourself and say, oh, it's just history, it's a legacy, it's funny, ha ha. It's not. There's nothing funny about this mascot. Thank you for your comments. Um, do we have anybody online? I'm just trying to go back and forth. Nobody online? Do we have some folks? in the audience who yes. would like to speak. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I can't yeah, I'm speak. Dark, I'm in black, I'm like a techie. Um, I've lived here for nearly 30 years. Can you tell us your name? Tamara sorry? Morgan, okay. East Randolph. Um, my daughter went to school here all her life. Uh, the minute I drove into town, the minute I saw this mascot, I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what it was. It's a Klan's person. It's the Ku Klux Klan. I'm sorry, you might feel differently. You might have grown up thinking of this symbol very differently. Obviously you did. And you didn't ever have to fear the Klan. I've never had to fear the Klan. But I'm educated enough to know that it's a horrible symbol. And I'm educated enough to know when I see it, I know what it is. It's racist. It's wrong. I've been embarrassed about it the whole time I've been here. Um, we've gone over this and over this and over this, and it's time to put a stop to it. 
This is the wrong mascot for the school. If you want to have pride in your school, I agree with Mr. Wood. Take the horse, they take the rider off. The rider is the dangerous thing, the horse is not. A rider in a sheet is not a ghost. It's a man in a sheet looking for black people to glitch. Now, if that makes you comfortable, that's fine. But it's the wrong mascot for your kids. Okay, we have someone online. Sierra Bond. Yeah, we're gonna put the mic by your, by the owl again. Okay. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, we're having this discussion around this mascot, because uh, I think there's like, you know, a lot of people have differing opinions on it, uh, but I feel like even if the mascot wasn't intended to portray a Ku, a Ku Klux Klan member, that doesn't mean that like the impact can't be this figure that is very polarizing to a lot of people. Um, especially given a lot of the stuff that's happened in the community in the past few years. Um, I feel like having that symbol sort of as the forefront of the school uh, just sort of like continues to be sort of polarizing to people and giving out this sort of message of a not welcoming place in this community, um, which I know a lot of people right now are trying really hard to fix. Um, and so I think like hearing what people are saying um, I'm hearing people say some really awesome things about how they were feeling um, in the school. And I feel like that in order for a community to work together and, you know, celebrate our sports teams and everything, it does not, we don't need to like fully rely on a symbol of a mascot to do that. Um, and so I think that like if we, our current symbol is causing harm to people, there are plenty of other things that are like representing Vermont, representing Randolph, that we could definitely use that um, does not create an uncomfortable space for so many people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Millington, do you want to, I believe there it has been some movement toward changing the the mascot. Do you want to? Um, oh, there's somebody else. Yeah. Okay, then we'll we'll go ahead and then maybe. Hi, John Helfand, uh, Brookfield or Oxford. So, down by the gym, there's uh, there's a I don't know if it's what you call it a letter posted. Um, Mr. Wood talked about some of it. I'm going to read some of it. It says. With Randolph always wearing a white uniform and always broke down the floor fast, galloping, it gave him the idea, galloping ghosts. He asked uh, Coach Gatiss for con his consent. Coach came to the locker room and asked all of us, the students, the team, and we answered yes, so the galloping ghosts were born in 1940. None of that has to do with the Klan. None of that has to do with racism. The history of the Galloping Ghosts, 83 years of history, is about a basketball team. So these comments about it being part of the Klan just have no basis in history. I also pulled up some yearbooks. The original Ghost Rider is skeletonized. And I believe Mr. Millington brought that up in 2020, that it was a skeletonized rider. Uh, the Klansmen that exist today are human beings who are racist. Uh, this is a skeletonized rider, not a human being. Uh, and I, I brought several photos of yearbooks, different colors uh, from different years. Um, none of them look like the Klansmen, none of them. I also went to the Southern Poverty Law Center and got a photo of Klansmen. And if you were to look at the photos, you would see they're not even remotely close. So I would suggest that the rider remain on the horse in a skeletonized fashion as it was originally made in the 1940s. 
uh, that does not look like a Klansman, and it, it can just have a cape. Um, it has nothing to do with the Klan, ma'am. And well, I, here's a picture, the original Galloping Ghost. And this is Let's the Klansman and... from the Southern Poverty Law Center. The they don't look anything alike. They do. They well, do not. Folks, they don't. the Let's comments start. are directed up here to the yes. So that would be my recommendation, and that it be painted back on the wall. And the school spirit that many of the kids, our former students, talked about here uh, could really begin again. They could, they could coalesce around it. Uh, a skeletonized rider in a cape is not dressed like a Klansman. The origination of the name had nothing to do with the Klan, and we shouldn't throw it away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next person. Mm -hmm. Um, my name is Brooke Sargent. I went to school here, and I'm a little bit offended by people who are saying this is like Klansmen because I played under these, under this mascot. No, don't shake your head at me. I'm so serious. Like, th there's really nothing racist about this. I am not racist. People, please. I, I'm just letting you know, like, I, I actually, like, played under this mascot, and now you guys are making it sound like it's racist. It is. Well, then you're calling me racist, and you don't know who I am. I do. I am asking. Calling the mascot racist. It's just who you are. Yeah, no, I would love to stop. Then she, right she has a right to say her piece undisturbed, so please leave her undisturbed. If not, I will have to ask you to leave now. Thank you. I am sorry, ma'am. So I've been then asked to kind of to speak. I'm William Millington. I am the superintendent. Um, I can give a little bit of history, um, which I think is probably important for people to know. I can talk a little bit about the decision that was made uh, four years ago. I think it was four years ago. It might have been five years ago at this point in time. Um, but the issue was brought up at the time. I think I was in either my first or my second year here. Um, and I did do a considerable amount of, of research um, on the historic mascot, which, is, as Mr. Helfand has said, was a Grim Reaper on a horse. It was a skeleton with a scythe um, sitting on a horse. There is still an image of it that is on a plaque that is out in front of the school if people would like to see that. And I also had the opportunity to go up and spend an evening um, with the alumni. They used to run a good alumni dinner up in, in Brookfield at the old town office up there. And what was interesting at the time is they had brought in yearbooks that went back to the 1930s, I believe, and I spent some time kind of flipping through the yearbooks. That historic image of the mascot was never officially changed. What had happened during the research was sometime in the late 1980s, early 1990s, um, my understanding in talking with folks was that um, the yearbook committees would get together and would ask the students, you know, what does the galloping ghost mean to you? And the students would produce artwork that would go into the, the yearbook, uh, but they were never the official image of the school. Uh, for some reason, people decided to um, use some of those images up and around the building. Um, and when I did my research, what I saw, again, my perspective in trying to find uh, the right solution for the community at the time, was that there was a racial overtone to the later images. And that was why I made the decision at the time that I did to have the image removed um, from the wall. There has not been an image represented of this building um, or of this team for the last four or five years. The equity coordinator that we have now that has been brought on board and um, the high school has been working to reimagine that image. There was a picture of um, you know, what they were looking at in the, the town paper about a week ago, and it is merely a ghostly horse to change that image. Um, when I did my research in terms of the galloping ghost name, 
There was nothing that I could find that associated it with stereotypes, uh, with discriminatory practices, uh, or, or, or anything at that point in time. But again, the, the, there is ongoing work about reimagining that image. Um, and I think the work that folks have been, been doing towards that end has been, been very positive um, and is putting things in the right direction. Thank you. Um, my name is Laura Churchill. I've lived here all my life. I went to school here. I agree with Woody. We, we all know that that was, uh, wasn't intended to be a Ku, Ku Klux Klan. Um, over the years, we've, we've added ghost stickers. I've been doing these for, I don't know, well over 30 years, I started painting them on when Amy was in seventh grade, and then we turned them into stickers. Since then, one of my daughters has a, I, I'll get this bad, but he's a half black, half white little boy. I have a grandchild that's half black. So this puts it in a different perspective. So I was talking with Tina on Sunday, and if we could get the galloping ghost back that the artist painted in the gym, that he was a beautiful horse, not the one that was on the paper last week, but a bareback horse and our little stickers and our little chant that we believe in ghosts, I think that would be a good compromise and just take off the writer that's offensive. Because even the goes or the sweatshirt to Tina and, and Bruce is offensive, so I would like to go with Woody's compliments. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Shane Lyford. Um, I graduated in 1993. I'm, I've coached here. Um, I'm varsity wrestling coach, I've coached baseball, coach soccer, coach all these kids, so I'm in and out of the school. Um, I'm also, you gotta forgive me, I'm not a good public speaker, <laughs> um, but I am married to a black woman and I'm raising a child of mixed ethnicity. And so we have open dialogue all the time. Um, I talk to him about uh, these events and things I'm hearing at the school and I have conversations with him, I ask him, you know, is this a thing? And his response is always no. He said he does not deal with racism within the school. He loves his mascot. He loves the ghost. My wife is wearing her ghost sweatshirt tonight. I brought her in and showed her the image a couple years ago before it was taken down and I asked her what she thought because that's the conversation we needed to have. And she did not see this as a big deal. And imagery is what you make of it, what you perceive it to be. We could change the mascot to whatever we want, the Care Bears, and somebody's gonna have an offensive outlook. Somebody's been mauled by a bear. We could do this all day. What we need to do is just go with a ghost, leave our, leave our name alone. There's a story tradition here. Um, I remember when I was in school, every kid from all walks of life, they were out there on the soccer field when we had a home playoff game. They were wearing ghost stickers on their cheeks. It was, everybody had shirts. There was pride there. So I don't think we need to abandon that. And I'm sorry to the people who feel different. I'm sorry for your experience. You should not have to endure that. But that's not here. And I know 99% of the people in this room, and I'm comfortable having my wife and my kid around these people. These are my community, and I know them well. And this, this just is, is not an issue. And so, it is an issue, though. Well, so, uh, please, please let people speak, and if you want to come up to the mic, you can come up. Absolutely. And speak this is again. an issue for some people, and for some people, it's not. Uh, as I said, I have com open conversations with my wife. My wife is black. My wife has experienced real racism before, threatening, you know, physical violence. And if she's comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable.
We have a hand online, so I'm going to switch to the online folks. Uh, Denise Preston. Denise Preston. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes we can hear you. So I asked a question in the chat section. Going back to your process, Lainey, I just want to, I want to verify, and maybe you, maybe you said it, but the audio wasn't always great here. So if the complainers forfeit their, their time, um, do, is this, is this now null and void or because you don't have a forum there, can they bring it to you at a different time? So at this point, they, it's, the complaint is not, well, it's, we'll respond to it, but it's, they didn't come to the hearing, which is the way that we follow the process um, in the policy. So anyone at any time can, can come to us and request a hearing and complain about our mascot and we have to follow the policy which means we would need to hear their complaint and then deliberate and make a decision. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, do you want to go ahead? Can she hear? She, how is she hearing? Uh, right Hi, Karen. You have your hand up um, online. You, you are welcome uh, to speak. So, to unmute herself first. Oh, you may. If you're muted, please unmute. Okay, do we have someone down front? Yes, it looks like it. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Albert Wood. I've lived here, I can't say all my life because I'm still alive, but I've been 75 years old. And I've been here since six years old. I went to school here, I graduated here. My daughter graduated here, my son's graduated here. They, they lived with the, the idea of galloping ghost. They played, they wrestled, they did all the things that the galloping ghosts did, and they were proud of it. There's nothing wrong with the galloping ghosts. It's, it's wrong that we have any problems with racists. I have three grandchildren that are black. Am I racist? No. I love my grandkids. I have 13 in all, but I have three black ones, and they're great kids. Nothing wrong with it. I would never, ever trade them off for anything. That would be racist. And if we are doing that, then we are racist. But we aren't. We have got an emblem here of Galloping Ghost, which represents the school. It represents the, the kids that are, that are doing all the sports. Nothing wrong with that. They're having a great time. Have they ever they gone out and said, we're racist? No. I don't believe they ever had. I've never heard that in my kids. My kids are great. And I hope your kids are great. But that's the way it is. But like I said, I'm 75 years old. I have not a problem. I don't have a problem with anything. But I do have a problem with us trying to change this name. And I think we're wrong. And if we have these people that are so right about coming here, and can't even show up, then what is it we're looking for? Are we looking for people to tell us what to do that don't even want to? If that's the case, maybe we ought to do it. But if not, then I think we should stand our grounds. Anyway, that's all I can say. Thank you. Do we have someone else from the audience? Can I speak again? Sure. 
Um, okay. What I'm hearing from this audience of overwhelming numbers of white people is a lot of privilege and a lot of ignorance about racism. Please refrain from comments. You oh, they can comment all they like. I no, expect no, it. we're not going to have okay, this turn fine. into mayhem. Um, there is a lot of ignorance about racism in this town because until, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago, maybe 10, I'll give it 10, the only people of color in this town were adoptees, white people who had adopted children of color. We have a few people now who are coming into town who are black or other races or some indigenous folks. You have been very isolated here and very privileged here and you've grown up in your little community and you think that everything is hunky-dory because you've never experienced anything wrong. It's fine. I, I have black grandchildren. Ooh, that makes me not racist. It, it is terrible. Let's try. It is terrible. Let's try to. Let's. Oh, let's. That's a racist line. Guys, you're just feeding her. And not and not patronizing to other people, please. Stay. I'm not being patronizing. I'm telling the truth. That's the way. That's your perspective. No, so let's, my perspective. Well, there's so few people here yeah. that even have that perspective. I understand. So, so this is a ridiculous meeting because you're not going to do anything with it. No, you're not. You know? You're not so hearing. Everybody's furious, and what are you guys going to do? People wanted to sh have an opportunity to speak, and we're giving them an opportunity to speak. Yeah. One time. One time. You've been speaking for 20 years since I've come to this town. 30 years, sorry. Um, People have been wanting to get rid of this mascot. Did she get more time? This is her second time. Up here. This is my second time up here because so there are very few people with okay. my opinion here. It's okay if people want to speak more than once. It's very difficult, as you can see to be someone with an opinion that goes against the primarily white opinion of this town. And with all respect to Dylan, he grew up here. And that's all he knew. And he had to toe the line or he was not going to be safe. You can't speak for Dylan. No, I can't speak for Dylan. And I'm sorry. I believe that to be true. Let her speak as well. I just need to clarify that. Thank you. Please. No, Dylan spoke very nicely for himself. What I'm saying is that it wouldn't have been very safe for him to think otherwise. And none of you has had to face that kind of danger. None of you in this very white audience has ever had to face racism, women, maybe you haven't recognized the sexism you face, but you have. I'm, no, I'm a very woke person. Ooh, that's a horrible thing to be. This isn't about you, okay? It's about this awful, awful mascot. Okay, your time, your time is up, Thank I'm being you. told. Okay. Hello, Folks, everybody. let's not, Let's try to keep the comments yes, to yourself. Yes, very much so. And let come to the mic if you would like to speak. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, um, for anybody who is offended by it, I am sorry. But you know, I see things in life every day that I'm offended by. But you know what? It's my thing. I moved here 30 years ago, like you. And when I pulled into this town, I didn't see an offending thing. What I saw, because there actually was a sporting event going on, was a sense of pride, a sense of community, a sense of union, of people working together. The ghost doesn't represent the clan. It represents a history of a town that works together and stands together. 
When there is a tragedy in this town, it comes together and it helps one another. It is not based on race. It is not based on anything other than a need. That ghost symbol to my husband and so many other people in this room represents a t different times in their lives when they needed the support of their community. It is a representative of a community that stands together, works together, and cares. And as for your attitude of people in this room other than the few minorities that we have, I don't know about you, but I'm a mutt. I got a little bit of, I'm a mutt. I have a little bit of all kinds of ethnicities in me. I, yeah, I'm a mutt, I'm a mongrel. I do have, Afri I don't have African American. I have American Indian, I have Scottish, Irish, everything. All of these people and almost all of our ancestors in one way or another were oppressed, whether it was you were a woman or you were an Indian. My grandfather would not tell people that he was half Native American Indian because he was ashamed of it. Okay, so you can't sit here in judgment and say every person in this room has white privilege. They don't understand being prejudiced against or anything else. Some of us have. So you are being, basically, I'm sorry to say it, you are being just as racist as somebody else because you're judging people by the color of their skin. We are all human beings. We should all just embrace each other, accept each other for who we are and stop labeling everything. And instead of arguing, hug somebody. Why does it always have to be a fight? Why can't we agree to disagree? And there is always gonna be adversity. And if these students don't learn how to handle adversity in a school system, how are they gonna handle adversity when they get out in the college system? Because I know for a fact that four of the alumni from last year's graduating class have already gotten out of college systems because okay. they couldn't minutes, handle the adversity when they got up. there. Three minutes are up, sorry. We just need to be more compassionate. Thank you. I just want to say one more thing. I do feel like, as Lane mentioned, that there was like a recognition of what this mascot did mean and why the process has been made to change it. And when speaking about this, I speak about the new mascot, not the old one. And just like recognizing that we can like, again, recognize, apologize, and shift, which is what we're doing. And I feel like that's the right decision. But I feel like taking the name ghost out of it isn't needed. And I think that's what a lot of us are here for. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll let uh, one or two more people speak if they'd like. Hi, uh, <clears throat> I'm a junior here, uh, my name is Rowan, and uh, I think that the main issue here isn't, it isn't really that people are like offended by the imagery, I think some people feel threatened, and like that's a concern, and I think the main thing that uh, people feel like is a uh, threatening part of the imagery is the rider uh, in white on the horse, and I think, uh, uh, I don't know if it's necessary to change the name. I don't know how I feel about uh, the idea of having like a skeleton horse or a skeleton rider on the horse. But I think if we were to lose the uh, the rider on the horse, um, I think that that would make most people happy. I don't know if I don't know what everyone's consensus is on that, but it seems like that's what we're moving towards. So. I think that's a would be a pretty good step to take. That's just my opinion about it. But yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. 
we have someone else who would like to speak? We have one more. Nathan Snow. I was class of 89. Um, we, our girls and boys teams were um, really dominant for those years and with the mascot being what it is, I am, it's, I'm proud of what it is and I don't think it needs to be changed. I mean we have changed it a little already to comply with some complaints um, personally, I think it's time to uh, leave it alone and uh, find something else to complain about. Um, let's put more of our time into teaching our students and learning a little bit more about our community. Um, at, that, at that time, in 89, we had a family, a uh, colored family, the Williamses, um, super, super salt of the earth people. Never had an issue, never had a problem. One of them's um, out in California right now, and he could be watching us right now, but I don't think he ever, ever felt displaced from it. And I'm sorry for you just because I'm sorry for you. <laughs> and I, I think it's time to move on. I know we're all trying to evolve and get over things and we're in a sensitive area where everything needs a label but i think it's time for the adults to tell the kids to stop worrying about it and find something else to do so we'll try and hear that person. I, I just, uh, how much money and time has been spent on this issue? If you don't care, why are you here? I do care. I care on uh, not Let's cheap. not have a dialogue right now. <laughs> We're gonna move on to our final comment from the person. If you wanna go out in the parking lot and have a dialogue about it, you may, but <laughs> we're not doing that right here, okay? <laughs> Uh, Katie, Katie, Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I am a teacher at Randolph Elementary School, but for right now, I'm putting my parent hat on. And while we're on the topic of racism, perhaps the community would like to know yeah. that, my, that my son tells me frequently he hears the N word at school. It's a problem, at least at middle, the middle school. I can't speak to the high school. My high school student has gone elsewhere. When I was a student in 1995 at Woodstock, another Vermont union school, no one ever, ever, ever would have said that. We knew it was wrong. I don't know what's going on. Maybe kids are hearing it at home but maybe parents of kids who this is concerning to them could talk to their students, but it's not just the mascot here. I'm sorry. Social media. Yeah. Is that, is that all, Katie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, it is now almost 8 o'clock. I think we've heard from a lot of folks. And um, we appreciate you coming out. And again, um, this was just an opportunity for you all to speak since um, our hearing ended.